Steven, it's kind of like the D750 and the Z6 met on Tinder. And Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is a preview of the Nikon D780, which is a DSLR by the way. Oh, and before we get into all those specs, this is replacing the D750, which was announced back in September of 2014, making it over five years old. And now, surprise, they come out with a D780 DSLR with some very interesting specs, starting with 24.5 megapixel BSI full frame CMOS sensor. Now that sounds interesting, Steven, just like the Z6. That's right. It has the same sensor in my opinion. We don't know that for sure, but it's probably the same sensor if I had to guess. You have an Xpeed 6 processor. ISO goes from 100 to 51,200 and it tops out in the plus high mode to 204,800, making it one stop better than the D750. Now I do wanna interrupt myself, Steven, right here to say that we had three D750s in the studio for probably two years filming Raw Talk. We used them for quite a lot of things to film video where we were static subjects and didn't have to move. The D750 had to be one of Nikon's greatest best, most affordable, full-frame DSLRs, at least in comparison to the higher-priced ones that they ever made. It was the camera that I recommended across the board, whether it was Nikon, Canon, or Sony. It was what camera to start with? Nikon D750. Well, of course, a lot has changed since five plus years ago, and now we have the D780, and I'll continue on with the specs. You can get seven frames per second when you are shooting with the optical viewfinder, AKA in DSLR mode, or when you flip that mirror out of the way, making this a wannabe Z6, you get eight frames per second in live view or 12 frames per second when you dumb the raw file down to 12 bit. So that's your silent shooting capability. Eight frames, 12 frames a second, no EVF. That's one of the differentiating factors between a Z6 and this type of DSLR is once that mirror flips up out of the way, you have to use the LCD screen to try and take pictures, which I had an argument about earlier with Steven, even though he agreed with me, there's a lot more people today, mostly younger people, who have been conditioned to use cell phones to shoot pictures that didn't have an electronic viewfinder or didn't have an optical viewfinder, that they're okay just holding the camera out, which I highly disagree with as a way to photograph just because I don't think you can get your lines as straight. I just don't think it's as good, but that's the difference between a mirrorless and a DSLR. If you want this to be a mirrorless camera, you gotta flip that mirror out of the way and you lose the EVF capability. You do have 51 autofocusing points with 15 that are cross type when you are shooting it as a DSLR. They've also added the D5 algorithms to help you get better autofocus, if that even, if you can even tell the difference, but they said they added D5 algorithms for autofocus. And if you flip the mirror out of the way to shoot it as a mirrorless camera, you have 273 phase detect autofocusing points, which sounds familiar, Steven. That's what the Z6 has. That's right. It has the same exact autofocusing points when it's being shot as a mirrorless camera. Now, what this camera has that the Z6 doesn't have, and by the way, we will do a direct comparison video when we get both of them, or sorry, when we get a D780 in our hands in a couple months. You have dual UHS-2 SD card slots. I still would have preferred CF Express, but who cares, whatever. You got two of them versus the Z6 having one, so that's nice. For those who like to shoot wide open outside and couldn't really get away with that without putting any kind of filter on the end of their lens with the D750, it topped out at 1 4,000th of a second. Now it tops out at 1 8,000th of a second, which is something that you could only find in those higher end pro DSLRs from Nikon. Now you do have the same exact LCD screen on the back of the camera as the D850. It's 2.1 million dots and it is tilting. Fantastic screen on the back of that camera. It's gonna be a fantastic screen on the back of this camera. And it's just like I said at the beginning of the video before we got to the specs, it's like the D750 was on Tinder and it was playing the swipe game. And it's like, oh look, a Pentax, swipe left. Oh, an Olympus, swipe left. Oh, some other crappy camera, Leica, swipe left. Oh, look at this camera. It's so cute, look at the chin on it. It's so pretty, swipe right. 
bing, 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 bing. You got a match and then you're hooked up and you're f and now you have a D780. That was funny, Steven. That was funny. Nope. Now that we got Tinder out of the way, you do have Bluetooth in this camera. They added time-lapse movie shooting, which means you can shoot raw files for the time-lapse and then go ahead and put them together at the end. That's a really nice feature. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that I just announced the super huge mega camera giveaway. That's right, I'll be giving one of you a free camera or lenses valued up to $3,499. Now it's completely free to enter this contest. Head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2020 for all of the contest rules and to get your entries in. But I do want to let you know if you purchase Fro Pack 1 or Fro Pack 2, you will get bonus entries. And if you already purchased Fro Pack 1 or Fro Pack 2, you are already entered. Now, let's get back to the video. You can do focus stacking, which is a feature that we found in the D850, as well as the Z7. So those are some added features. But there were some lenses announced as well, which I'll get more into when we get the photo news fix, but I think it's important that I talk about those two lenses. One, the 70-200 2.8 VRS is official. We will officially have part of the Hebrew Trinity or two thirds of the Hebrew Trinity done come February for a price of $2,600, which actually isn't that bad comparison or when you compare it to the other, uh, the other 7200s that are out there for mirrorless cameras. I still hate that they moved the focusing ring out to the outside because the RF lens from Canon is smaller. So basically the end of that lens is where the focusing ring starts for the Nikon, not a fan of that. But a lens that you could put on your D780 is the 120 to 300 millimeter that was a development announcement earlier. This is a 2.8 lens. Yeah, we now know the price. It's available in February for $9,500. Yeah, so you're probably not buying that for, for your camera if you're buying a D780, but if you could, $9,500. Anyway, continuing on with specs, we have a magnesium alloy body. As expected, it's a pretty nicely built camera. No more flash. So if you were looking to use this camera and have a flash on top it, that pops up, this one no longer has it. But because of that, it has better weather sealing because they don't have to worry about moisture getting in where the flash pops up. The ISO button has now been moved to the top from where it was before. And if you think you're gonna get a grip for this camera, you are not gonna get a grip for this camera, at least from Nikon because they're not making one unless they get the grand idea to make a battery pack with no buttons and no functions and no functionality and no good handling uh, though they may do that now let's move on to the the video specs even though they are exactly the same as the Z6 just without a electronic viewfinder 4k 30 frames per second full pixel readout 1080 at 120 frames per second with sound unlike Canon 1DX Mark III, which doesn't let you have sound when you shoot at that speed. You've got 10-bit N-Log out, you've got focus peaking and time code, and the camera will be available in late January for the price of, Stephen? $2,300. $2,300. Do you know how much more that is than a Z6, Stephen? 600. 600, correct. You get a cookie. Six, exactly. $600 more than the Z6 is right now. Now, the Z6 is currently on sale. I think they're going to extend that indefinitely because they can't sell that thing for $2,000 when the A7 III is less than that and the EOS R is even less than that. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth paying a $600 premium to buy a D780 DSLR versus going with a Z6 for $600 less than an F2Z adapter that can adapt your F lenses that can go on to, that went onto any F mount camera? Though you can't take the Z lenses and go backwards. And I know some people out there are thinking this is the best of both worlds, the D780. And I don't think it is the best of both worlds. You're not getting the new capabilities of the faster focusing lenses that are sharper all the way across that are silent when it comes to shooting video. You are getting that autofocus, but you are using those F mount and AFS lenses to go ahead and do that. Do I think the D780 is the greatest Nikon DSLR for this price point ever made? And the answer is absolutely. This is a fantastic, camera at least based off of the specs and knowing how good the D750 was. So who's it for? 
If you're somebody who has no desire to go to the mirrorless world, and I will say that as a professional photographer, I think most professional photographers will graduate into the mirrorless world in the next couple of years because of the features and the functions that it gives them. Or you have a D750 and you're looking to upgrade and you have no desire to go to mirrorless, this is a nice upgrade, you're just paying that premium. I think for the hobbyists and the consumers and even some professionals that want to shoot weddings and portraits and sports, this is a super well-rounded camera. You're going to spend the 2300 bucks. that is, it's an okay price point, but when you know that for $600 less you get the Z6 and you get the modern tech, you just don't get the two card slots, I still would go with the Z6 personally for less money because then you can have the best of both worlds. Then you have an EVF when it comes to shooting video. Then you have an F to Z adapter to adapt any F mount glass that you have. Now I know not everybody will agree with that, but I'm just trying to give you my opinion based on the specs that we have. And I do, I, I don't want any confusion. I think the D780 is going to be fantastic as a DSLR and it's gonna be a very nice video shooting camera. So if you're in the market for a Z6 or a D780, which one would you go with and why? Please let me know down below. Now thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.